What's going on there, folks? Good evening, uh, Earthmaster here on the live stream. Uh, it is September 7th, 2021, about 8.12 p.m. Cali uh, California time. Uh, looking at the Earthquake 3D globe shows that 7.0 earthquake, originally a 7.4, got downgraded by the USGS. Uh, they're in Mexico. Currently, there is still a threat of a tsunami uh, into parts of Mexico here. Let's go ahead and check out what the uh, Tsunami Warning Center has uh, on this uh, tsunami threat. <clears throat> right here is the uh, latest information from the uh, tsunami.gov website. Let's see if we can click on that. <clears throat> or we can go down here. Uh, number two. Uh, magnitude for this event has been reduced from 7.4 to 7.1. The tsunami forecast is unchanged in this message. Um, let's see, based on the preliminary earth earthquake parameters, hazardous tsunami waves are possible for coasts located within 30 uh, or 300 kilometers of the earthquake epicenter. So this is for Mexico. I don't see anything else, any other threat issued uh, for any other territory other than Mexico at the moment. So we'll see what happens here uh, with this uh, tsunami threat. Let me double check here and see. Estimated times of arrival, arrival will be pretty quick. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and check out the buoy, National Data Buoy Centers real quick here and see if there's anything in event mode of course, not a whole lot of uh, buoys that are operational, it looks like, in the region of Mexico. I don't see any local uh, Gulf uh, areas moving or anything out here in the uh, Pacific. Of course, some of these are, like I mentioned, is inactive. But far as the rest of these, I don't see anything kicking up um, at the moment. There is one way over here for some reason. Uh, towards the uh, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire in event mode, but not for sure what that's about. So just heads up, still currently a tsunami threat, folks. We'll uh, check, keep checking back on that, uh, on that threat here in a little bit. Earthquake activity. Let's see. Uh, let's go back here to uh, USGS map and look at the movement that uh, we've seen here within the last uh, short amount of time here, within the last hour or so. inland it looks like this was a little bit deeper originally when it was 7.4 so they've upgraded they downgraded the magnitude but upgraded or uh well made the earthquake more shallower when it comes to the depth there 20 kilometers uh, as the uh, review status has been updated for this earthquake it is in an area of the uh close to the uh, middle american trench area this area is a major player in producing some significant size earthquakes in fact uh, just further south of this epicenter, we've seen that 8.2 back in 2017 along the uh, Middle America Trench. Subduction zones here such as this one play a major seismic hazard in producing, uh, no doubt, some, uh, some of the world's largest earthquakes. That one struck 2017 um, back in September as well, almost to the date, September 8th, 2017. Well, and that's UTC time. So technically, UTC time is indeed September 8th, and almost to the exact same hour. That's pretty odd. What What's the chances of that, folks? <laughs> Unbelievable. So anyway, uh, quite a bit of movement, folks, kicking up here. We'll go ahead and uh, run around the globe. Let's see uh, exactly who felt this out here in, in the Mexico area. Quite a few folks reported filling, it looks like. Um, in the region of the epicenter and the inland, of course. A little bit of light shaking. Looks like inland, uh, some stronger shaking, of course, near the epicenter. A few, for, uh, few uh, folks reported filling that uh, throughout the area. Many different regions there into the, uh, into the uh, Mexico area. This earthquake did, did create a uh, pretty nice signature on the stations, uh, seismograph stations throughout the west coast. I seen it come in and it was crazy looking. I think originally it came in on the EMSC w uh, website as a 6.1. Uh, 
and uh, man, it just looked it looked way stronger on the live seismographs. And of course, it did get upgraded 7.4, then downgraded to 7.0 all over the place. But it uh, looks like that 7.0 will stick. I did notice also that there was a 4.3 earthquake in the New Madrid area shortly after the 7.0, 7.4 earthquake. And I have it right here on the map. I have not changed it yet. So I went ahead and included this in my last update video when the uh, big earthquake came into Mexico and also the New Madrid area because it shows that it's been reviewed. So therefore, I assume that this was no doubt a legit earthquake. It was only shortly after um, they posted this that it was uh, removed for whatever reason, possibly from a, uh, you know, the uh, S waves kicking off across the surface from that large earthquake there in Mexico that this seismograph station just happened to pick it up. It's just odd. It's really odd. I mean, why just, why that station all of a sudden? Uh, just unbelievable, kind of crazy. We can go back and check and see if there was indeed an earthquake around the New Madrid area. That would definitely show up on the uh, seismograph stations here in Yellowstone. Of course, the uh, P and S waves from that 7.0 in, in uh, Mexico created uh, a shadow, so to speak. I don't even think we'd be able to see if there was a 4.3 in the New Madrid area uh, by looking at these graphs here. A lot of these stations are so uh, adjusted highly that uh, nothing really comes in. I mean, you can't even see anything coming in. Like Old Faithful, uh, Mary Lake picked it up, but a lot of these stations over here in the northwest and uh, looks like Moose Creek, Idaho, picking up that 7.0 earthquake pretty significantly. And as I mentioned, I just don't see uh, that that uh, 4.3 showing up. If it did, it's underneath the shadow of that large earthquake. But it did pop up and it was reviewed and it did stick for a little while that there was a 4.3 in Bloomfield, Missouri, which sits right around the New Madrid area, which is a major seismic, seismically hazardous area. Uh, there was a little one earlier, it looks like a, uh, a 2.0 um, a few hours ago quite a few hours ago I should say this is UTC time uh, looks like way earlier this morning in this region but uh, that's about it uh, into the west coast region definitely want to be on guard here watching all this activity kicking up um, from that uh, major earthquake there in, in uh, Mexico all around the uh, coastal ranges of northern California kicking up quite a bit of movement uh, been watching this area over the last week or so seen uh, just sporadic microquakes through this region over the last week into the coastal ranges and also some continued movement up here in the northern Sacramento Valley around Redding area. The Cascadia Megathrust area 3.3 off the coast. There's some deep movement here in this part of the uh, of the Gorda, uh, Gorda area. The Cascadia Megathrust subduction zone sits right about here. That's where the subduction begins. The locked area uh, this deeper movement taking place uh, to the west of it. it's about 25 miles or so but it's a uh, it's a deep earthquake for this region 3.3 at 25 kilometers also a little bit of movement further up here towards the Gorda ridges uh, 2.5 relatively shallow at 10 kilometers and uh, nothing further upstream here into the Cascadia pretty quiet at the moment we are still seeing some swarming in this area that we've been watching for oh man look at all those earthquakes over the past week we've seen about 148 earthquakes in this swarm of earthquake activity here around the uh, the Gulf of Alaska region into this part of Alaska just right uh, Canada sits up here at Alaska in this area no major quakes yet but uh, man this swarming has got me a little on the edge here looks like a 4.1 still sits as the uh, there was two 4.1s uh, sits as the main quakes there and there's quite a bit of other uh, microquakes and whatnot in this region whatnot right <laughs> uh, I am not from the Midwest I, I was doing a, a live video up in uh, Lake Tahoe South Lake Tahoe a couple days ago covering the fire and uh, I don't know I guess I said whatnot around 13 times or so honestly I don't remember even saying it once, but then again, I just caught myself saying it, but uh, I'm not from the Midwest, so I'm going to try not to say that a hundred times. We'll see how that goes. So there we go. Activity kicking up here again, folks, um, today. 
keep an eye on this region pretty closely. The Aleutian Trench, really quiet as we look through uh, this region here. But there is a 4.8 earthquake kicking up at 28.1 kilometers into the Bend area, kind of like the, uh, the um, Aleutian Trench and the uh, Kamchatka Trench area, almost at that Bend area. 4.9, 28 kilometers, and this follows all that movement there. In the Mexico area, uh, some further movement close to uh, Japan, inland, uh, kind of towards the Japan Trench, a 4.6 and a 4.4 uh, throughout the last 24 hours in that region. We are seeing a return of earthquake activity, deep movement once again into the Tonga region where they uh, had a 6.0 earthquake. This one here, relatively shallow. That was way earlier this morning. And uh, some of this other earthquake though, pretty deep, 572 kilometers for a 4.9 in this region. And that was, uh, looks like that happened prior to the surface quaking there of that 6.0. Um, what do we got for South America area? It's hard to say exactly what's gonna happen here, folks, with this 7.0 kicking up. Uh, West Coast, I mean, I, I still think we're watching this area pretty closely for some further movement. It's just been uh, awfully too quiet. Even though we see quakes, you know, microquakes and the threes and whatnot every once in a while, I think it's just a little bit too quiet. Uh, need some uh, major release happening there soon. Puerto Rico scattered out and about here. Look at this. This is normally confined here to the southwest of the uh, Puerto Rico area. Now we're getting some further movement and some deeper earthquake activity around the region. Uh, kind of stretching and up, um, migrating up towards the Puerto Rico Trench region. So we'll keep an eye on that area as well. Uh, the South America area along the Puerto Rico or the uh, Peru Chile Trench, seeing quite a few fours and also some deeper earthquake activity with those fours into the uh, Trench region. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map along the Cascadia subduction zone. Wow, check that out! It's even got a little a little feature to it that's pretty awesome looking i mean we see a, a lot of blobs of just all these dots and whatnot but we're actually seeing a trail of activity in this in this general area uh slippage along the cascadia subduction zone down dip downstream of this region here um, all these epicenters of trimmer taking place but it's got an interesting tail here uh, what do we got here? 138 epicenters there. Still seeing some movement into the Northern California region. Uh, a little bit uh, could be explaining the surface quaking that we're seeing uh, take place up there around the um, Redding area. Let's go back and check that out real quick. Right around that region of where we're looking at the uh, subduction trimmer. We're getting some uh, relatively, eh, a little bit more shallower than, than the uh, trimmers. These are 15, 16 kilometers, but still relatively deep for this area. Uh, but these microquakes are a good indicator of the continued trimmer uh, within that region, but much deeper. I'm surprised we're not seeing a whole lot of uh, surface quaking up here in the Pacific Northwest. Let's see if I can find out what I did with that uh, up here. Volcanoes look pretty quiet, folks, here in Oregon. A little bit of movement uh, around the Mount Rainier area, kind of kicking up some microquakes. And uh, we are seeing a little bit of activity, some deep movement. Uh, I'm not for sure what that's about. Zero, uh, 25 kilometers below the surface, right along the Seattle Fault System. But uh, with all that trimmer taking place in this region, I would expect to see some more uh, surface quaking, but uh, that could be possible tonight and into tomorrow. So we will see how that uh, transpires. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. We've seen that earlier. Earlier, We'll check that out. Uh, Idaho, Sawtooth Fault area, getting some movement uh, as well. Just a few microquakes and uh, same up here for Montana region. Uh, what do we got down here? Southern California looks uh, pretty typical. Pretty typical day in Southern Cal. Just some microquakes along the San Jacinto Fault area. And the Ridgecrest region, seen some earthquakes as well. Uh, some movement through the Antelope Valley area and also into the uh, Tonopah region of Nevada. What else we got here? Let's check out the Yellowstone map here real quick. I know we checked it out. There's that pretty large quake. Not for sure what's going on up here, folks. It's not a landslide. It's not no uh, uh, volcanic explosion there at Yellowstone. Just a 
Somebody needs to jump on that seismograph and fix it, man. It just, it's been like that for a couple days, kind of odd looking. Uh, so as far as microquake activity, folks, uh, or any type of activity, pretty quiet into this region. No, uh, no uh, major activity kicking up there in Yellowstone right now. Uh, sunspot movement uh, kind of kicking up. Got a, quite a few sunspots on the sun right now. Look at that. Looks pretty active. These right here are facing us pretty significantly. A uh, couple, couple sunspots to watch here as they're facing the Earth side. This is looking uh, pretty active, no doubt. Uh, here is a little bit further image. Look at these babies. These things are kicking. See what the threat level is here for flares. We're looking at at least... Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain we're going to see a sea flare. 70% uh, chance, 15% chance um, with an M flare. It looks like an X flare, kind of the larger flares. Uh, only a 1% chance. Are getting a little bit of a uh, geomagnetic disturbance here uh, just within the last couple hours, it looks like here with the KP indexes rising up to 4. Uh, you can see that on the uh, Aurora forecast. Looks like that's kind of kicking up a little bit. Uh, what do we got here far as uh, this was an old article from the uh, solar.ham network. We'll check out spaceweather.com. Unexpected solar wind gust, a gust of solar wind buffeted Earth's magnetic field. Uh, that is, uh, let's see, the sharp uptick in the solar wind speed was unexpected, arriving too soon to be a CME. Uh, whatever it was, whatever it was, these, what? The tra transient has set the stage for uh, high latitude auroras on the night of September 7th and 8th. Be alert and uh, on guard for that cool stuff. Unexpected is always cool when it comes to watching the aurora. So, current aurora oval, and of course, these sunspots kicking up here on the live stream. I do keep that uh, running, it does update every minute, I think. And also, the current image of the sun earth facing side, I kind of like to keep up as well so we can see the sunspot activity. Uh, what else we got here, folks? I was going to do the image, uh, photo image sent in from viewers, but man, I've had a busy day, busy day all over the place, so I didn't get a chance to even check my email. We'll catch up on that tomorrow. If you are looking, or if you would like your, um, a picture that you've taken recently or within the past, whether it's nature clouds um, maybe you were visiting Yellowstone or anything like that something that you've taken a picture of and you'd like to share it here on this channel I will be happy to show it and include it on the update videos that I do every night except for tonight I've gotten behind so we'll do that for sure tomorrow and we'll do a, a few extra uh, just to make up for the loss tonight so uh, send those pictures and the description what they are where they were taken uh, taken and the date your name and uh, we'll provide that uh, image for the viewers to see all over the world and uh, I think it's pretty cool I like it I like getting images and I like seeing uh, uh, getting emails from all over the place send that to earthmastermail at gmail.com that is my email earthmastermail at gmail.com pretty easy one to remember so I look forward to the images have a good night folks stay safe out there and be prepared a whole lot of shaking going on peace out